<clears throat> watcher. Um, yeah, I thought I've not done a video in a long, long time. Over three weeks, but not quite as long as four. Um, so I thought, you know, uh, why not? Why not? Um, you know, why not make a video? I felt I've got an old manner of shit here, and this is a pickups video because let's face it, I don't do anything else. <laughs> I don't do anything else. Um, so sort of screw other do other ideas for other other sorts of videos. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna keep making pickups videos. Um, now, actually, to be honest, I, I I thought screw it. You know, it's about time I did something like a collection video. So I might do. I'm just looking down there. That's where my PS1 games are. Um, I might do a PS1 collection video, even though even though I'm pretty close to the, near the end now. But um, you know, um, and that could take that could take years to be honest to get those last few for a decent decent prices. So I thought, sorry, got a bit confused. Um, yeah, um, that could take years. So I'm like, oh, screw it. Might as well do it now. Yeah, why not? Well, that's for next time, or sorry, um, or some other time. I've got um, it's a pickups video. I've got myself a nice glass of piss. Um, yeah. Actually, before I start, I just want to apologise if I've offended anyone. Um, I've noticed that. Um, I like to, I like to look at the uh, the stats on my videos. Just they they interest me. Just to get an idea of the sort of people who are watching my videos. And um, <laughs> you know where they are in the world and stuff like that. You know, just generally it's interesting. And I noticed going back. I think it must have been mid June. I think I made a video mid June, and I noticed there's a pattern. From mid June backwards, from all my videos backwards, it's for about two years. Um, I've obviously offended someone, and if I ever apologise, <laughs> I'm getting all like eighties music video again. Screw it. Um, I've noticed that somebody has de-liked or unliked all of my videos for about two years. <laughs> So I've obviously, I've obviously, um, I've, I've, obviously <laughs> I've obviously betrayed someone, you know, they, they felt really offended that, you know, everything, everything up to now has been a lie. So, so if I ever, if I ever offend you, I apologize. Um, obviously someone who was, um, you know, a regular watcher of my videos, but I obviously I did something so heinous. Like they felt the need to dish out some uh, retrospective punishment, or you know, in, in, a, in a quite a neutral way. There's no unlikes or dislikes. They were unlikes. So they they just sort of went from positively enjoying my videos to um, a retrospective status quo. But who knows? Who knows? Anyway. Um, yeah, I've got a whole mixture of stuff here. Quite a big pile. Ooh, it's spat on the screen. Um, that will show up later, and it will look like something it's not. Um, don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got some DVDs here. Um, uh, I'll whiz through the DVDs pretty quick because, you know, generally, I'd, I'd like. I just want to, you know, I'd, I've. Um, don't always have somebody at hand to talk about stuff I've bought. I get excited about things I've bought and you just want to talk about them. And that's essentially where I treat pickups videos. You know, um, I want to talk about what I've bought, whether people want to listen or not. <laughs> I get too excited. That's how it works. I get too excited. You know, you just want to talk about things, don't you? I mean, like... No one I know, like, who lives... Close by, or any of my, any of my best friends, 
have the, the slightest bit interesting in retro video games. So what, what do you do? What's the next best thing? Go on something like YouTube. But these aren't retro video games. These, these first lot are DVDs, but um, I'm going to get them out. They're all ch mostly from charity shops. I think, yeah, pretty much. Um, actually, one of them is from Amazon. Uh, the first one is The Mist by uh, Stephen King, or Frank Darabont, who, who made... Um, uh, what's his face? Shawshank Redemption. And also, he's like the producer of... Um, the Walking Dead. This is supposed to be really good, and I've wanted to. I've wanted to watch this ever ever since I saw the, read the review. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be pretty good. Um, yeah, uh, not really much too much I can say about it, but other than the fact that I, 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 I've read that it's good. But yeah, I just need something to put on my tat while I'm. Let me just move that there. I need to pile it up because it is. I've got to be honest, it's a big old pile. Um, this one was just in a charity shop, and this is another one. I don't really know too much about, but I know it's good. Um, it's called The Hunter. Um, it's got Willem Dafoe in it. It's about a... What was it? He, he's um, an ex-military dude who gets employed to go out and... Um, to go out and hunt, capture the last of this sort of rare tiger thing for uh, medical research purposes, something like that. But again, that's especially really good. Look, it's got stars. You know, I've said it before. Only four stars, though, I just noticed. No fives. So I didn't like it that much. It's not that good. It's not a five star. But it's supposed to be good anyway. Um, this one, this one marries into one of my um, one of my video games. Uh, it, it was in a charity shop in a, in a sort of a buy one, get one free. And um, it's a Tropic Thunder. And it was like, everything was a pound, but they were still buy one, get one free. So essentially 50p. They could just charge 50p for things, but... Um, yeah, and I think I really like th these things like this proper spoofs of um, send ups of action films, things like this, and uh, the other guys, and Twenty One Jump Street. I really enjoy M so much more so than than garbage like The Expendables. Apologise if anybody likes Expendables, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> but um, I did really enjoy this. It's you know it's it's, it's got half an eye on. It's sort of a tongue in cheek. It's ironic. It and it's you know properly ironic rather than just sort of one boring naff joke. Um, I'm not here to slag off people. <laughs> people's cinema taste. Well, that wasn't the. This is about. Yeah. Um, next one. This one's a bit a bit stupid, um, but um, it's a, it's a DVD I've already got. It's a, a Troll Hunter, but I I bought this from Amazon a while back. And um, I wanted it to come with the, the lenticular sleeve, look. But my one didn't. And I really wanted one with the lenticular sleeve. And uh, it wasn't too expensive. And this was only £1.25. So I thought, what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap over the sleeve, because obviously my other one's brand new. Take the sleeve, trade this in, and CEX will give me 60p for it. <laughs> you know, just because I'm a little bit mental. I'm having, my, I'm having my traditional sun troubles again. Really don't want to tip that over. Does that make the slightest bit of difference? Can't tell, but anyway. So I better be quick in other words. Um, yeah, so the Troll Hunter. Um, this one ties in with my one and only um, online purchase. It came from Amazon Marketplace, but it was one of those sellers who are, you know, they're tied into tied into Amazon. So it says honoured by Amazon. It's one of those, and so the upside is that you you've, you know they offer a bit better security than just some random bloke. The downside is they're free. They're free. Um, Fucking, fucking discs rattling around inside. Um, their free postage only applies to uh, purchases over 10 quid. And the purchase I made was 5 98 so I had to make it up. So I bought this instead, which I really wanted to watch, by a guy called Kevin McDonald. Um, this is sort of a post-apocalypse thing about, you know. Um, by a guy called Kevin McDonald who made uh, The Last King of Scotland and... 
I can't remember what else he made, but he's he's a he's a good he's a you know skilled, um, talented filmmaker. But although this didn't actually get across the board great reviews, for some reason it's something I've, I've always wanted to watch. So notice these are a lot of quite. Actually, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's um, it was costing me a fiver, which I don't generally like to pay that much for. DVDs. It just reminded me, I went to the car boot sale the last two times, something I haven't got with me, um, or I have, sort of. Um, uh, last two times I've been to the car boot sale, bought nothing other than a 50p HDMI cable, which is hooked up to my telly, to my DVD player, because it's supposed to have an upscale, and um, I've been trying to work out if it's actually making a difference. I'm not sure it is. You know, I'm trying to convince myself it is actually making a difference, and it says it is, and it says it goes from... 480, um, whatever, IP, what IP, 480i, I think, to 576. I think it is making a difference. I'm not convinced, but I think it just sort of rounds off a few edges, you know, jagged edges. But uh, so, yeah, that was, as well, actually, my cable, I'm not, not going to show you that because it would mean unhooking it. Um, this, uh, a few more to go. This um, excellent, really underrated um, film, it's called Dark City. It's uh, by a guy called Alex Proyas, yeah, who made The Crow. And it's essentially um, a 99p, you can't read that. Um, it's essentially a gothic, noir, fantasy take on The Matrix. It's essentially the, first, the, essentially the same story as The Matrix, but it actually came out in 98, which is a year before The Matrix. Is it 98? Annoyingly, having since buying this, I've discovered, which I didn't know actually, I should have known. I've only ever seen this once or twice, once or twice. It is really good though, so give it a crack. But I've not, I've since discovered that there's um, uh, there's uh, a director's cut of this, which takes out takes out the uh, the voiceover over the um, over the intro, which is sort of uh, which. I think the producers insisted on including just so people didn't get, didn't get too confused. But then, you it's, it's perfectly easy to one easy to understand, easable, easy to understand without it. But uh, you know, that's, that's how things work. But I think it's underrated. I don't think it did too well in the, in the in the cinemas. But it is really good. So give it a go. It's called Dark City. Um, uh, this uh, penultimate. Or sort of an ultimate. Um, it's called New Dragon Gate Inn. It's a bit of kung fu. I like a bit of kung fu. Um, this this one uh, I've only ever seen this once. I saw it when I was at university. Um, my mate Nathan uh, used to bang on about it, say how good it was, and he brought it around to our house on VHS. And we went out, went to the pub, came back drunk, rat assed and tried to watch it, and did actually watch the whole thing. But it was. Uh, Difficult to follow, difficult to read the subtitles. It's my over, overriding memory of it is how difficult the subtitles were to read because uh, they were fast and we were drunk. So don't ever watch, um, you know, don't even bother. The, thing, uh, the only thing I can really remember out of it is about there's um, a little dude who pops out of the ground. He's got a meat cleaver. I think he's some sort of butcher. I don't know. It's called New Dragon Gate Inn. And I don't know who's it. It's got Tony Young in it, Donnie Yen. So... Make it, yeah, it's got a, actually a really good, um, really good cast. Last two, they're the same thing. Um, bought on the same day, literally within like fifteen minutes of each other. Um, the first one, uh, well, you can, you can understand. It's got <laughs> a town called Panic. Um, it's essentially a, a, a absolute insane um, film by the people who made that old Cravendale advert with the was it the cyclist. It's a cyclist, the Red Indian, or the American Indian, and the and the, the cow, all playing musical statues for the last glass of milk. And um, yeah, it's it, it's quite difficult to uh, describe. Um, it's basically animation involving like little um, moulded plastic toys, like like plastic soldiers you get as a kid, or the cowboys and Indians and cows and farm animals. Those old, and they they've animated them in a really crude way. And but it's it's really funny, but it's just bombards you with one thing after the other. And again, this is another one where it's difficult to follow the subtitles because it's so fast. 
and it just batters you senseless and it, you, you have to sort of get used to it because oh, to begin with it's quite overwhelming but then you sort of tune in and you know you start to adjust but I think what happens I think there's a um, an American Indian and a cowboy and a horse all live in a house and the, the Indian and the cowboy <clears throat> want to build a barbecue for the horse's birthday but then they order too many bricks and the bricks arrive they order they order a million when they should have ordered a hundred and then the bricks and the bricks get piled on the house and the, um, then there's like these little frog lizard men who steal all their stuff and then there's a, a mad um mad inventor who shrinks them and just there's alter, alternate universes and stuff yeah it says was it in breathtaking 2d i like that in breathtaking 2d um that was two quid but then it's been on my um, list for a long time and in my Amazon wish list. And that was in a charity shop. I think I went, literally went over the road, down the road, um, saw it again. But this time it was sealed. <laughs> but me being me, I thought, oh, I've got to have the sealed one. We've got the brand new one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trade the other one in. That gave me about £1.10. So essentially it will pay for this of, you know, all but 40p of this. So, you know, because that's how my brain works. I'm a bit stupid like that. That's all the DVDs. 16 minutes in. I'll, I'll try and be quick. Um, right. I just remind me. I keep. I keep seeing the uh, that um, that religious guy try to uh, try to recruit me for a few videos ago. I keep seeing him. I think he's my 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 local competition. <laughs> where where it, when it comes to uh, buying video games, which is a bit weird. Yeah, I, I, I saw him, I, I, I was sort of uh, going up and down this uh, uh, Barnet, Barnet High Street, just going on the charity shops. I kept walking past him. I kept going to sort of like, sort of turn my, <laughs> didn't want to catch eye, uh, make eye contact. So I don't think he would remember anyway. But uh, f fair play to him because he was doing he was doing what he was doing with me. He, he was going up and talking to people and trying to uh, tell them about God. But so fair play to him, fair play to his persistence because I can't imagine He's made much headway, but he keeps on going. So in that in that way, I have to respect his uh, respect his powers of um, yeah persistence. But right, these are games. After seventeen and a half minutes, these are games. I'm going to move the DVDs out of the way. Put them there. Right, games. First three. Some of these are, some of these are actually for keeping them off trading. I bought them specifically to for a bit of CEX credit, and some of them were bought with CEX credit. So. I've not actually spent that much money in the end, you know, in the grander scheme of things. The first one I'm not too bothered, not too sure about keeping. It's only a pound, but the game's pretty bit of a turkey. It's um, Lost World Jurassic Park. It's a platformer. I'm not convinced by it. I don't. I'm. I'm and I, I, I made a, a cons sort of conscious decision a while back to stop. To stop buying, um, you know, stop buying. Uh, and actually, no, no, I didn't. No, that's that's a bit of a lie. Um, I mean, because this was this was a bit of a gamble, but I sort of had a vague idea that it wasn't very good, and and it's sort of, it's it's matched up with my what I expected really. So. I mean, it's a sort of a novelty in that respect because you control dinosaurs. It's like a platforming, don't you? Like it's like a two D, two D, three D, two D platform where you control dinosaurs, but it's not that good. But um, that's I, I just I decided I wasn't gonna make, wasn't gonna buy novelties anymore. So and this this is pretty much what it is. Sort of novelties that I keep because they're novelties rather than they're actually any good. Um, so I'll probably end up moving this on. So if anybody anybody wants it, fancies it, um, have a word with me. <laughs> uh, this one, and also also I saw a batch of PS One games, and it's always nice to see a batch of PS One games in a charity shop. You go, great PS One games in a charity shop, but then when you when you scan through them one by one, you realise there's nothing you want. It, you know, it was just sort of Disney. Rhythm action games, they had that Hercules game, stuff like that. There's nothing I wanted, and it, it, that was the, the closest one. And it was only it was only a pound, but so I felt sort of slightly obliged to have a punt, even though I had a vague idea it wasn't any good. But, 
This one, um, this is a bit of a keeper. Um, Star Fox Command for one ninety nine in the charity shop. It's an American version. Um, have no idea what it's like. I don't know whether it's it's probably Star Fox with some sort of tactical element. I mean, it's not expensive. I mean, you, you wouldn't pay much more than that in um, CEX. But, again, I saw it in a charity shop and felt obliged to buy it. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, the, the reviews have been okay, I think. From what I've read. But, yeah, there you go. And this one. This one, uh, I've, I always want to say, I don't buy many racing games, but I've, I'll hold it up there because it's got sun there. I don't mind buying many racing games because um, generally, you know, I generally don't buy many racing games. But I've always wanted to play this because it looks really good fun, like um, like uh, driving away from the police, trying to evade the police. It looks great fun. You know, just in a, in a sort of a, sort of a purely you know non serious sort of way. You know, there's, there's nothing sort of po faced and GTA, not GTA, um, Gran Turismo like with this. It's literally just. I'd actually, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but no, um, I think, didn't Metal Jesus Rocks mention it in it's one of his sort of favourite racing games, or the, at least the 3DO version, something like that. But um, yeah, I saw it, and it actually, it, it, it's quite collectible. You know, if, if you have the full uh, set of uh, Need for Speed games on the PS1, that will set you back a decent amount, you know, probably sort of 15, 20 quid. So um, not that that's the reason I bought it for, but um, yeah, I took, I bought this. I took it to the counter. I think it was a, it was ninety nine p. And the guy goes to me, he goes, "Oh, great, yeah, retro." Uh, he's obviously sort of, you know, aware of retro, and he's sort of used to play video games. Or if if he didn't now, he's used to, yeah. And he goes to me, "Oh yeah, we uh, we had uh, we had a Mega Drive and a Master System in last week." And I went, "Oh, oh really? You really you sold them, have you?" And he went. Yeah, uh, if either that or we've uh, we've just chucked them out. I was like, seriously, <laughs> what did you chuck them out for? And he, he goes, uh, you know, you, you just can't test them. And yeah, something to do we can't test them. And um, it's just like I, I don't think he knew really knew what what had happened to them. But uh, I said, oh, they would have been right on my street if I'd been there. But uh, I would have taken them off your hands. But no, I should have I should have uh, asked him to asked him to find out. What had happened to them? But they might have been sort of stashed in the back or something. I don't know. But I would, I would easily take them off his hands. I mean, I doubt they. I'm not sure they would have been able to give them to me for free. I don't know. That probably would have been illegal if they'd not tested them. You know, they might have. They might have given them to me, and I've taken them home and electrocuted myself if they'd not been tested, and then then they'd be liable. I don't know. Uh, don't know what I'm talking about. But there you go. That's um, Need for Speed. Oh, I've got a shiny stuck on my teeth. Excuse me. Sorry, this is sun's getting on my tits. That's a bit better, isn't it? Right, games, more games. Actually, that was games. I've already been showing you games, haven't I? Um, first one, no, not first one, third. Oh, anyway, this is to trade in. Oh, I don't have this, but I've got the Xbox version. Um, this is purely for trading, it's trade up. Uh, makes perfect sense to me. Um, I'm not shy about saying that, that, that you know, I'll have a crack at that. Um, this, this will get me uh, eight quid in CX, and there are things I want in CX, so it makes perfect sense. I mean, CX is great for getting those quite hard to get. Just, just keep an eye out, keep an eye out on their um, stock lists, and uh, build up some credit in the meantime while you're waiting. And this will get me eight quid. Uh, I think I've got another one coming up. No. Actually, a town called Panic and. What else was I going to trade in? I was going to trade something else in, but um, yeah, so that was in a charity shop and it's in really nice nick, and that was 99p. Um, these next few, 
uh, this one was just sort of random purchase out of the car boot sale. I got the bus back into town because it's slightly out of town. It's just on a mush. I do enjoy the on a mush games, even though um, I don't get you know this sort of slight, slightly down, slightly down the, uh, the the waiting list, so to speak. But I do enjoy them, and they 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 sort of tend to fall by the wayside in in people's. You know, in sort of people's sort of favourite games list, don't they, on a musher? But then there were four PS2 games, so they must have done well enough. But you don't often hear them spoken about, do you? But I've always enjoyed them when I played them. So I've got two, three, and four now, and but I just want to get the first one on the Mega Drive, on Mega Drive uh, Xbox. Um, talking of Xbox, uh, these two, these two came from my favourite or one-time favourite branch of cash converters. Uh, Capcom Fighting Jam and SVT Chaos. They were one, that's one ninety nine. They both came together. But um, I went in there, I went in there, and this was about the time when I was sort of a bit, a bit uh, sort of 50-50 about buying things for them because they don't give me my change. <laughs> and... Uh, Went in there, and I was always getting all ready to sort of build myself up to fight my corner. So no, give me my two p. <laughs> and then uh, she uh, rang it through the till, and it came up as a pound, even though it said two quid. Oh no, she it, they'd been discounted or something. So I was getting all ready to fight my corner, and I didn't even have to anyway. So slightly disappointing in a way. But the, these are two games I've uh, the sort of, the sort of games you have on your list but you're not prepared to pay sort of too much for. And so about a pound is, is what I really wanted to pay for both of these, even though I did want them in, in my collection. So I wasn't, probably wouldn't ever pay more than two quid for either of those. But even though, you know, they're okay. I think SVC Chaos Express would be slightly better than Capcom Fighting Jam, but they're nice to, I don't have too many Xbox fighters. Um, right. Uh, similar theme. From Cash Converter, Halo 4. Only one ninety nine. Only one ninety nine. So cash from cash converters. Different cash converters, not cash converters that had been implicated in this seedy scheme of uh, depriving me of my coppers. But you know, I thought I was a bit I was a bit paranoid and a bit suspicious. So when I went to buy this <laughs> when I went to buy this, I gave him two quid. And he said to me, he took my money and goes, Oh, two quid. That's two quid then. Hang on, two quid? You know, my my head, in my head, I've put two and two together and got um, 15. Goes, two quid? What? Hey, eh? what? Two quid? Because I think he was trying the same thing. It turned out he wasn't. <laughs> so I ended up embarrassing myself in my paranoid state. But two quid for Halo 4 is pretty good, I think, isn't it? Yeah. But um, but I'm learning now, I'm learning. I'm learning to control my, my paranoia. <laughs> It's not going to stop me standing up for myself. Um, in the same branch, you know, this is a funny one. Same branch. I made a bit of boob. Um, where is it going back? Did it go back about two weeks? Um, I went into this, went into this branch and I bought this. Oh, no, but I didn't buy it. I saw it. And um, uh, it was, uh, okay, no. Three ninety nine bargain. I took it to the counter because I really wanted it, and I uh, fished around in the in the little drawer because they're all the disc separate, and it's got like a. I don't know if you can see that. It says three on the disc hub three, and he pulled out a little sleeve with the discs on it, and it only had two discs. I'm thinking, oh, no, he's missing a disc. And what's the point in buying this if it's missing the extra content? None at all, because Fallout New Vegas isn't, isn't doesn't really go for much anyway. And this this one's sort of probably set you back fifteen quid or twenty quid. I think it's actually twenty quid in CX. So I thought there's, there's no point in me going for it, is it? Because if it's missing the extra content, if the extra content is on that third disc, because it says it's got three discs, so I thought, oh, gutted and left left it. I went home and checked, and it does only have two discs. So I thought, what's going on? What's the game? But um, for some reason, the box tells you lies. So I thought, screw it. I'll just sort of consign that to, you know, as a lesson learned. Um, went back yesterday and it's still there. Someone's slipping. 
the, the game collectors in my local area are slipping. It was still there. This is definitely worth three ninety nine all day long. So, and the thing is, that's not the first time this has happened in since my last pickups video. It happened with this in a charity shop. Uh, Yu Gi Oh Tag Force Five, not my sort of game. So I le actually left it, but it I bought it with Tropic Thunder. But I'd seen it in a charity shop and we're going back again in about two or three weeks. Seen it in the charity shop and left it because it's not my sort of game. Um, I saw it was uh, released in 2010, so well, you know, and it was only 50p because it was like games, games, music, um, DVDs a pound, and two for one, so it was only 50p. But still, I left it. But then I went home, checked how much uh, CDX give you for it. Again, like with Simpson Hit and Run, it's great for building up CDX credit. Realised um, CDX would sell it for 18 quid, but they'd give me seven quid for it. So I was really fucking twat. <laughs> you made a boob. But again, I um, went back uh, a couple of days ago and it was still there. Someone's slipping. Or maybe they just don't like Yu-Gi-Oh. But um, I mean, I don't like Yu-Gi-Oh, but it was worth buying just to build myself up some credit. I mean, there, there's a Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Saiyans in my local CEX, which I want, but it's 20 quid. So if I can spend 50p on this and a pound on Simpsons Hit and Run, that's 15 quid. So that's the lion's share. Lion's share of what I need for that DS game for £1.50, so that makes sense. But, um, not long now. Uh, this last one, not on an impulse buy, but I saw it. It was had been on my list, my DS list for a long time. It's uh, Nano Stray. I paid for this with, with uh, CX credit, so there you go. I had about £19 credit or something. I've actually bought uh, two or three things. These next three are all CX credit. So like this one uh, looks, it's got a feel of um, Gradius about it, Gradius 5 and um, even uh, R-Type Final. It's got, that, it's got a feel about it. It's that sort of, I don't know whether it's by the same people, I don't know. I'm not sure, I don't think it is. But um, This appeals to me more than the, the original Nano Stray, which I think is a slightly different perspective. It's more sort of, um, slightly sort of Galaxy Force, uh, you know. I, I, I think it's more sort of vertical scrolling than this. I don't really know, but this is supposed to be pretty good. Oh, well, I've watched. I haven't actually played it yet, but I've watched videos, and the, the power ups a bit tinny for my liking. Slightly disappointing, but it, it does look good. You know, I, I can't lie, but like I said, the power ups are a bit ineffectual. <laughs> But I can't really complain. I think three pound fifty is a good price anyway. But I get, like I said, I paid for this with with credit, as as I did with this Siberia again with CX credit, which is a bitch to get hold of. A lot more difficult than the PS2 version, which is quite difficult to get hold of anyway. And this was in I mean one of my local CXs, and I, I can remember a long, long time ago Pete doing a, a gameplay video of it and getting a bit confused. <laughs> and to be honest, it does look quite confusing. Can't lie. I think it's a point-and-click game, but you, you actually control a physical character on the screen. It looks physically looks like uh, Resident Evil, but it's more of a point-and-click game. It's in that sort of adventure, fantasy sort of style, like um, Shadow of Memories or, um, or Dreamfall, you know, Longest Journey, that sort of thing. And also, with CEX Credit, uh, probably the best one of the lot, for me anyway, it's uh, Tactics Ogre. In actually okay nick, all bar that um, there, which is which is actually quite severe all the way down that side, but everything else is okay. So those last three, the Siberia, Nano Stray 2 and this, were all with CX credit. So essentially it's it's efficiency. It's a game collecting efficiency at work. That's how it works, you know. Get rid of your loose ends and put them more into something you really want. It makes sense. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, everything's in there, by the way. CD, little, little mini CD thing, and an art book, and everything else. But it's not that expensive anyway, if I'm honest. But it's a sort of it's a sort of a game where they charge too much on on Amazon. But if you wait wait on eBay, it'll cost you about that anyway. But ain't good. Finally, I'm sure I had some stories, but I can't remember now. Finally, um, this came with uh, how I live now. Only cost me five ninety eight, but obviously 
because it was honoured by Amazon. I had to make up the rest um, with how I live now. Five ninety eight. This it was another one of those um, sort of slight, slightly lacking in lacking in description. Had to take a punt, but I felt slightly good about it because it was connected to Amazon themselves. So I had that that extra security, and it's a jumping flash, the original jumping flash. Um, so five ninety eight, and it is it the gamble paid off because it is in really nice nick. There's not really much I can complain about. Maybe a slight, a slight crack in, in, in somewhere on the, on the case, but that's about it really. You know, I got a bit lucky with that. I, I used to have that. I bought it on on eBay a couple of years ago, but the 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 description was pretty lacking, and there was like tea stains all over the front cover, and the, the disc was knacked, and the the spine on the manual was buggered, and it's just like it's not you know, it's actually gone up in price since. This used to be a game. Where you know you could, if you bide your time, you could you could sort of pay four or five quid for, but now it's more consistently up around the, the sort of ten quid mark. So I thought five ninety eight was worth worth a punt, but thirty six minutes. Back with the old long videos. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll try and do a. Try and do a <laughs> I'll try and do um, a PS1 video next, although I haven't really worked out how that's going to work. I might do stills, I don't know. Because, like I said, I don't have a movable camera to to point them at my games and my shelf. So I might have to do the old sitting in front of the camera, holding them up thing, which I don't really like. Don't really know. It's quite... I have to work that out. I might do stills, but I've not yet connected up this computer to my to my phone to you know I've not actually uploaded any photos to this computer yet so I don't know I have to work that out I won't leave you I won't leave you any longer um, yeah like I said if you're interested if that sounds interesting <laughs> look out for it um, uh, can't think of anything else I need to say no so I'll let you go um, feel, feel free to uh, to like this and unlike it <laughs> If that's your bag, and I'll see you later. Um, yeah, I will. Bye. Thanks for watching.